Right, Don, I've just shown you the, the paddle that my dad used in that long, month long canoe trip that he took in 1932. So tell me what, you're, what you see with well, this paddle. Well, I'm, I'm going to say this, John. I'm looking at it now, and I've seen the handle and the blade. Yes. And from that time, that era, I have a pretty good feeling that that is a chestnut blade. And today, you can't find them, and I think it's worth a lot of money today, especially with what you have on it. That's history. Yeah. Uh, so, but you, um, you seem to, when you first looked at it, you weren't... Uh, quite sure that it was chess. Now you're thinking it might have been an earlier version of what became from the 30s. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. would be the difference between this uh, and this the... ribbing in the, in the picture here? Uh, I have one in there. Yeah. Uh, repaired chestnut doesn't have that ribbing, but right. it's a, of a later date. Okay. So I'm thinking this is an early one. Right. Then they did have the ribbing. Now that can be researched probably. Yes. Okay. But I think. Well, what the made shape you think? Of that handle. Yeah, that, that was the, it. Was the shape of the handle? It's a chestnut. I the think chestnut. Uh, now, it's well, tell exactly me about like the one in there. What, what does a chestnut paddle mean? Like, who made it? Why is it? Well, uh, New Brunswick. Uh, okay. Very, very well-known canoe company. Okay. Uh, cedar strip and canvas for many, many years. Okay. Until the change started to come in uh, fiberglass and now Kevlar and right. so on. Eh? Yeah. yeah. So, what would a paddle like that be worth? To buy? Yeah, just by itself. Today, if you found one, uh, you know, someone walked in and said, I want you to sell my chestnut for me, what would you think you could get well, for them? I don't know what you pay on eBay, but you know what those are worth. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I, it, it depends on the person. I right. Mean, I would say at least three, four hundred dollars. Okay. Now the fact it's got a Sue Ross painting on it and it comes from yeah. that trip and that painting well, makes it, year, year, that's year. priceless. Yeah. Yeah. That goes with the shield. Right. It goes and, with it. <laughs> you know. Well, not that my brother's not going to let it go with the shield, but no, I think but it I mean, does. Yeah, the history. The history is there. It, yeah, know. exactly. So by blending this canoe race in with the Duncan Shield race, all we're, all we're doing, by blending the canoe trip that my yeah. dad took with the yeah. Chapel Boys and Johnny Francis, and, and, and blending that into Camp Duncan and, uh, and blending that into the Duncan Shield race, all I'm doing is in, in enhancing the history of You're it. tying it all together. Tying it all together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Right. Great, great painting. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, thanks. John, okay, go ahead. Those claims in Sapawi, uh -huh. uh, out of Cogan Ironlands, yes. were all handled by G.R. Duncan. Did you know that? No. Yeah. And the, they were iron ore. They set up there to mine them, and the ore was so heavy in sulfur they could not make it work. And so those claims sat for many, many Don, years. Don, you got to start from the scratch here. I, I, I'm a little lost. I, I, let me take you back to where you started. You were looking at the paddle. Yes. And something you saw on the paddle made you yeah. start telling well, us here. When it says uh, partridge here, Atacoke and partridge. Further up the Atacocan River, there is a place called Partridge Crop Lake, okay? Okay. And when they logged that, that country off up there, they also, these guys had staked these claims, uh, Atacocan Ironlands. And over the years, the, the claims, they didn't work out because the iron ore had too much sulfur. Okay. And so it was under the control then of G.R. Duncan, who held a realty rights to it. Oh my. And my brother and I were paddling up that river one day and I said to Joe, look, what is this? And there's an old family lived there for many years, the Fraser family. They said, Don, they're mining claims and they're patented land. Are you looking for a piece of ground? G.R. Duncan, you gotta go see them. <laughs> and sure enough, and the old lad came down and flat was the other guy. Okay. And, well, he said, you know, we can't Divided up the mining claims, so you have to buy the whole claim. <laughs> yeah, they were just looking to make some money off you. That's yeah. all they were doing. You know what? But the fact was, because it was patented, they said, yeah. we, we can't. And I, I have to tell you, they were very reasonable with us. Oh. Very re we, he came down, drove over that property, said, I don't see much here, boy, so we'll be able to do some business. <laughs> And we did. And we wound up, my brother and I, with 400 acres right along the river. And you bought that from? From G.R. Duncan. Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, isn't that something now? Isn't that something? How isn't time something? goes and isn't things that, come together. Isn't right? that good? It's amazing. 
you know. So, so when I started, when I met you today, and I started telling you a little bit about the story, that's the first thing you asked me: Is yeah. that the same? Am I the same yeah. Duncan? They rung the bell right, right away. away. Gee, and I said, Geez, I bet. Spencer, do you recognize some of these lakes here? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yes. and uh, can you tell us a little bit about them? Or? When you get onto this from Clearwater, you're going to have a ball. They're beautiful, beautiful lakes. Uh huh. Beautiful. They're most of them are very popular lakes here. Um, I mean, Crooked Pine is in the park. Uh, no, Crooked Pine is not in the park. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, that's no, up no. above. Uh, none of these are in the park. No, that's right. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I'm thinking of the, the... Some of these have cottages on them. Uh -huh. Some of these are still... Wild. Wild. Would have yeah. been the same as, uh, as Epau. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, some of the, like Mercutio, some of the best walleye fishing in Canada, as far as I know. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's incredible. Like, so. so if you had to pick, let's say, condense the one month down to one week, and in 10 seconds decide which lakes to go from, from what you know from that list, which ones would you pick? If I could get transported to each lake? Yes. Um, I'd go with Crooked Pine. I'd go with Clearwater. I'd go with Mercutio, Bevedere, and Union, Lac de Malac. There you go, 10 right. seconds worth. Apparently there's... Uh, I'll take you a week. Yeah, that, okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Apparently there's, um, there's some uh, uh, hieroglyphs, or what do you call them? Petroglyphs? Or petrographs. Petrographs. Whereabouts are they? Do you, this is where people... Uh, yeah, from I mean, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, we're writing on the rock. I, I've never heard any on the, on the men, ones he mentioned. Okay, all right. But the the museum may know. Yes. You know. Well, we've got the diary, yeah. so oh, we'll, so we'll, yeah. we'll get oh, it. We'll yeah. get it from the diary. Yeah, yeah. we'll get the, we'll get it from the diary. Oh Jesus, you go, you're going to have a great trip there. Great trip. Yeah. Yeah. That's I right. came here from Kirkland Lake in 1964, diamond drilling for steep rock mines. Okay. And tough, tough, tough to do. Hard, really hard ground work. Still alive right. here. I took one trip around to the lakes here, and I said, "I never leave this country ever. My bones stay here." <laughs> and I would never leave this place. Never. There's no place like it. And I've been to Europe. I've seen what they got. They can have it. I'm sorry, but not for me. Yeah. No swamp. No pine trees. No rocks. <laughs> not for me. How old are you, Don? I'm uh, 75 now. Yeah. It's not something. Okay, good. Thank you.